In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are continuing this celebration of Christ's baptism. Uh, this is a little different from what we see in the West and Western churches. You've probably heard this traditional thing of the 12 days of Christmas. So traditionally in Western churches, they would begin on the 25th, and then on January 6th, they would celebrate the arrival of the wise men, the three wise men, at the manger. Uh, we basically take care of all of that on Christmas itself. And January 6th for us is the Feast of Theophany, or the story of Jesus Christ's baptism in the River Jordan at the hands of John. Now, similar to the celebration of Christ's nativity, our celebration of Christ's baptism is not a one-off sort of thing. There are days and readings and services that lead up to them, and there are days and readings and services that continue after them. So the feast proper was yesterday. The practice in our parish when we have feasts like that, and we celebrate them the night before. So we did our celebration with liturgy Friday evening. What's interesting is that in big feasts like this, often the following day is a special celebration as well. So if you look on your bulletin, it says the Synaxis of John the Baptist. So because it's the seventh, we're highlighting who he is and his role in all of this. And so we get to continue talking a little bit about baptism. Now normally, the Sunday right after this feast on the 6th is called the Sunday after the offering. But because of who St. John is and the celebration that we have today, that celebration actually gets bumped to next Sunday. So next Sunday we'll continue to have readings and hear about the baptism of Jesus Christ. So we have this opportunity looking at baptism and what that means to all of us. Now what sometimes comes up, and this is clarified and discussed to some extent in our readings, there is this distinction between the baptism that John the Baptist did and the baptism of uh, Jesus or Christianity or the church, if you want to use it in those terms. John was preparing the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm just thumbing up my homily for Friday. Um, <coughs> and so he was preparing the way for the coming of Jesus. And the baptism he offered was ritual cleansing. Repent of your sins and kind of this, this public display of that wash yourself. So that is what he was doing with all of these Jews who were coming out to hear his message. The Messiah is coming. Prepare yourself. I'll baptize you, and it will be this ritual presentation of you uh, repenting of your sins. So when Jesus came to be baptized by John, John said, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. And that's because John knew Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He was the one who he had been preparing everyone. And now that he had arrived, the guest of honor, if you want to think of it that way, it was kind of pointless. Well, you're the one we've been waiting for. I don't have to prepare you. You're the one. And Jesus said, well, still, baptize me. <coughs> and as I said Friday night, and this is an important key here, it's not because Jesus needed baptism. It's because baptism needed Jesus. And so in his baptism, Jesus Christ is not the recipient of something. He is the giver of something. And that is when we began the practice of baptism to become part of the church and the faith. And so that practice has continued. And we see that throughout Scripture. And we especially have this thing that we're given at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. It's often called the Great Commission. This is the last words that Jesus Christ gave his disciples before he ascended into heaven. Go into all the world making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
we see something here in the reading that Tyler just gave us. It's the story of Paul going to the church in Ephesus. And he meets believers. But there's this conversation. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, no, we don't know what you're talking about. And then he said, well, who baptized you? He said, well, John baptized us. And so he said, Paul said, oh, that's the old baptism. You need to receive the baptism of the faith. And we hear that they received both baptism and the Holy Spirit. Let me parse out a little bit of that. That talks about how we understand baptism in the Orthodox Church. I'll talk a little bit about baptism elsewhere. We'll get to that in a moment. But there is this piece here that we understand. When we have a baptism in our church, yes, the person is immersed in water three times in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That formula we were given at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. And then they receive the Holy Spirit, as it is called, which is anointing with oil that has been blessed by a bishop. Chrismation is the word that we have. Other churches will often call this confirmation. And along with that, the person who has just been baptized and chrismated receives communion for the very first time. And it's understood that those three together are the rite of initiation into the church. So for us, that is baptism. All three pieces together. Now the difficulty often in this conversation, and it's kind of like this conversation that Paul is having with these people in Ephesus. If someone comes to our church who came from another Christian church, how do they enter? Do we baptize them and do all three things? Or do we look at them, if they come with a baptism, do we accept that baptism and what does that mean? This is the tricky part. There is a conversation around this, where it can be a conversation about what does this mean about the church I'm coming from? And are you judging the church that I'm coming from? Or are you saying things about the people who are at that church that I'm coming from? And it can become this very judging sort of thing. There are actually priests who on their own Make the decision. Anyone who comes into my church and wants to join, I will baptize them. I do not care where they came from. They're just getting baptized. And it tends to be in that spirit of judgment. Those people out there, elsewhere, lost what happened. The conversation about baptism and receiving people into our church is more about what happens here. How do we welcome people in the door? So there does need to be the conversation of, well, what are you coming with? It's not really a conversation about where you were and what we think about where you were and how we judge things about where you were. It's just, what are you coming with? And what can we do with that to bring you into the church? A lot of times people will think that this is my individual discretion on who can or can't come in the door. I don't take the individual discretion like some priests that just say, I'm going to baptize whoever walks in the door here, and ignore the direction of our hierarchs. A big thing that I highlight in our church is that I function on behalf of the bishops and the church. Baptism is a sacrament of the church. It's not my sacrament that I dispense based on how I want to do it. So it's actually very straightforward. Someone comes to our church, they say, I want to join your church. I say, who baptized you? It's always that question. Who baptized you? And it's not a specific person, because a lot of times when you were a baby, it's like, I was somewhere and I was baptized as a baby. I don't know who that person was. But it was in a specific place and a specific kind of church. And the approach that our archdiocese takes on that is... We have a list of churches. They're churches that have some sort of historic Christian precedent. Quite often they're churches that recite the Nicene Creed in some form. But it's a list of churches. And it's just saying, we 
know who these folks are. We know what baptism looks like in this particular denomination. They tend to be bodies. And it avoids the whole question of, well, was it this person in this place of this kind of Christian church that we don't know about? So, for example, across the street, Lutheran Church. There are a lot of flavors of Lutheran. This church across the church, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, recognized denomination. They're on the list. Someone from that church said, I want to become Orthodox, walks in the door. They said, I came from there, I was baptized there. I say, great, that's on the list, we'll move on. Kind of nice, one of our neighbors. Humble neighbor, like us, we're kind of humble. Now contrast that. You go down to Target, Walmart-ish, there's Parkside Church. Probably one of the largest churches in the area, both in terms of people, physical plant, money. That church was started in 1980. 1980s. A group of people said we want to do this non-denominational church. They're not affiliated with anyone. So they may be big. They may have a lot of people that go there. They may baptize people. They have a pastor who's a celebrity who publishes books, has a national radio program, and all of these sorts of things. He's kind of a, a, a celebrity in the evangelical Protestant world. If someone from that church came and said, I was baptized at Parkside, I'd say, the Orthodox Church doesn't know what Parkside Church is. We're going to baptize you. So that's part of what we look at here. But it comes back to this thing about what we heard in the Gospels. Often we'll say, Christian baptized, and that's good enough. But as I said, our understanding of baptism is the baptism in water, threefold formula, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Chrismation, anointing with that oil by an Orthodox priest. And as a rite of entrance, First Communion at an Orthodox chalice. You have to do the first two to do the third. But that's part of it. How can you be part of the family if you've been brought into the family and you don't share in the family meal? But it is a family meal. Orthodox. So we have all of those things. What we see elsewhere in Acts of the Apostles, Paul alludes to this. The response to, oh, I heard this message about Jesus Christ and I want to follow him. We hear this with these people in Ephesus. They're believers. We believe the message we've heard. But time and again, what the Apostles tell them, oh, you believe the word, the response is you're baptized. You come into the fold of the church. You don't do this on your own outside. And so that is what we have here. So that's our understanding here. Baptism in the Orthodox Church. How we observe it, what it means for us. And as I said, the conversation about what people do in other churches, what they believe in other churches, and what that means is a separate conversation. We've been given what we've been given, but God forgive when you judge others on what they do. There are pious, sincere people out there who may not be Orthodox. But it's our not, not our place to judge them. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.